AFB is a registered non-profit organization. While AFB started, AFB Scotland branch started in 2011, and we have Oli Folayon, who is the chair. In AFB Scotland, we have four streams, which are the next gen bits, that is what we're doing now. We also have the transition, which is for people who are in secondary school or like looking for jobs basically from university into working. We also have the real projects, which are people who are professionals that want to know about like different topics yeah. from oil and gas to cuts across all topics, basically. We also have the leadership program. Yeah. AFB um, Next Gen, basically, we promote high achievements in education and engineering all across Scotland. We also have an, one in Edinburgh. Um, basically, we've done three sessions this lockdown with Emmanuel Oni, who took to three of them. He's joined in here. Thank you, Emmanuel, for the last three sessions. And today we're going to be having Dr. Ibiye Iyala. And I'll just give you a little background on Dr. Ibiye. Dr. Ibiye is um, a senior lecturer in engineering at the Robert Gordon University in Aberdeen. He previously worked as a subsea engineer in the oil and gas industry and holds an, an honor degree in electrical and electronics engineering. He also has a master's in oil and gas engineering and a PhD in subsea pipeline engineering related research. He has been a STEM ambassador serving a, as a judge for STEM in the pipeline, secondary school competition, maths in pipeline, and he's been a facilitator for primary schools. Today, he will be covering nature in oil and gas, ingredients for making, making commercial accumulation of hydrocarbons, reservoir fluid types, and hydrocarbon oh, That's <laughs> welcome, Dr. Ibiye Iyala. Welcome, Dr. Ibiye. Okay, okay. Can I just ask those because I hear a bit of a of a of a bad uh, at your end? I'm not only here. I think you need to mute some people. How this oil and gas we hear a lot about, how, where does it come from? How, what forms it? How, what's, the, what's its origin, okay? But before I start, I like to say a few things. So first of all, my name, my first name, Ibi, is actually a long name. It's only 19 letters, okay? So it's only 19 letters. That's the 19 letters. It's one name, one full name. Now, and um, for those of you who may be in secondary school, who would have done chemistry, you would have heard of the word isoma. So I like to say that my name is a long chain hydrocarbon isoma, and it's got or long chain hydrocarbon with different isomers. So I go by different names. So people may call me my full name, which is Ibiye Kariwari Peribo. Sometimes they call me Ibiye, as, as I've just been called. Sometimes they call me Karibo. Sometimes they call me Ibiye Karibo. Sometimes they call me IB. And sometimes some others even have another I, IBI -I as my name, okay? So that's, that's the interesting part of my, my name. It's only 19 letters and you can have different isomers. So, if after today you want to call me any of these isomers, it's fine. Whether it's Ibiye, whether it's Karibo, whether it's IB, whether it's Ibiye Karibo, whether it's Ibiye Kariwari Karibo, it's all okay. And that is my introduction to hydrocarbons. Okay, let's go. So what are we going to be talking about here today? In the next 35 minutes, um, we'll be looking at an overview, a basic overview um, I've tried to pitch it at the level of those who are in primary and early senior secondary school. What we want to look at at the end of this presentation is you'll be able to charge and plug it there. At the end of this presentation, I sh you should be able to tell us what makes oil and gas. When we say oil and gas, what, the, what is it made up of? What is it composed of? At the end of this presentation, you should also be able to tell us the five ingredients which is why we titled this presentation, Five Steps to Heaven. The five ingredients that make for commercial accumulation of hydrocarbons, commercial accumulation of oil and gas. 
and I would explain that shortly. And at the end of this presentation, I'm hoping that at your level, you'll be able to explain the various types of what we call reservoir fluids. So I've used different terms, hydrocarbons, reservoir. We will come to know what that, 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 that entails. And the very end of it is that you'll be able to tell us some basic properties of hydrocarbons. For instance, in the oil and gas industry, we talk about sweet crude. Is it because we've got sugar in it? Is it because we've got honey in it? And we've got what we also call sour crude. Is it because we've got lemon in it? So we've got to know why, why do we say it's sweet and why do we say it's sour? We also talk about heavy crude and we also talk about light crude. I'm hoping that at the end of today's presentation, you should be able to go away with these points as listed here. Now, when we, when, when we talk about, when, what, you may want to ask, why did I choose the word five steps to heaven? And for those who have been in the oil and gas industry, we tend to refer to five steps to heaven in different places. Um, the oil and gas industry has been a major source of energy, the major source of energy. <laughs> yes, it has also been the many nations okay for many nations you've got nations whose primary um, gas resources and so um we've tend to say we've tend to look at, look at oil and gas as heaven you know um for those of you who may be where i am based in aberdeen we know um when the oil was at its peak, you could see lamborghinis you could see all the fine beautiful um, there were most people in the oil and gas industry. So people always aspired to be in the oil and gas industry, okay? And that's why we've used the term, the five steps to heaven, because it was like, wow, if you're in the oil and gas industry, wow, that's the place to be. And I hope that has not changed much, but at the end of this um, presentation, I would point you to some other things, some other areas where the world's view is going to. Okay, so first, um, I'll give you a little exercise now. Okay, can you all see your screen? Yeah. yeah. Just give me a thumbs up, so I, because I can see some of you. Just give me a thumbs up that you can see. Great. Now, can you see on this screen, there are a number of items displayed, about 30 of them, that we use every day or for our everyday use, and some of it we can identify with, including the computers and laptop phones that some of you may be using now. Now, most all of these products I have displayed here come from oil and gas, except one. Except one of them. Can anybody tell me what that one is so look at the screen look at it carefully i'll put the names of all the items i hope you can make out the numbers but even if you can't make out the numbers if you if you tell me what you think it is there's only one here out of these 30 products which is not made from oil and gas go on who wants to be a millionaire i've got one you've got one number what um num wait never mind oh okay still think the human being human being well we didn't quite talk about human beings here so um the lady you see is actually doing an exercise that's number 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 16 so that's just the yoga outfit we're looking at Anybody else? One last try. Crayons. 29. No. Crayons. No. What? Electric yeah. car. No. The lips. Electric car. Who hear you now? Thank you. I can hear that. I Something towels. What? Somebody said something. Something towels. Who, who, who is saying that? Let me hear. You. What's your name? Tammy. Tammy, what did you just say? Cotton towels. Well done, well done, well done, well done, well done. Out of all the items you've got there, it's just cotton towels that are not made from oil and gas. Tammy, do you know where the towels is made from? What the cotton towels is made from? Cotton. 
cotton. Well done, well done, well done. Okay, so you can see that more than 90% of products we use currently in our houses have some origin of oil and gas. They've got aspects of oil and gas. They are related to oil and gas, apart from our cotton towels. So very well done. Cotton is made from cotton. It's plant, cellulose. So well done, Temi. Well done. Um, I don't know where you're based, but maybe I'll give you a prize for that. Okay. So that's the importance of, this just shows you the importance of oil and gas. Our phones, our gloves, our crayons, somebody was saying crayon there. They all have your Lego toys have all been made from products of oil and gas. Okay? So that's why oil and gas has been so, so important to us. But the other thing I want to say about oil and gas is that, as we will see, okay, maybe before I say that, I'll just move on and then we'll see what we get there. Okay, before I go to that slide, quick question. Anybody know where we get oil and gas from? Ground. From the ground, okay, ground. What ground? Your back, your back garden? Like out in the ocean. Out, out in the ocean, okay. Out in the ocean, yeah. ground, okay. What? Okay, okay. Was somebody saying something? From the sun. From the Which one is better? Four, five, four, five, three. From wind. From wind. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> what is, what is, do we get oil and gas from? Here you go. Oil and gas. Another another name we tend to call oil and gas is petroleum. Have you heard? Have you heard petroleum? If you've heard, just nod your head. Say yes. Have heard petroleum? Yes. Okay, and petroleum, the word petroleum is actually gotten from a Greek word. And it's gotten from two words, petros and oleum. Okay, so petros. And for those of you who may read the Holy Book, the Bible, you hear Peter, the name Peter, which is petros, means rock. Okay, so that's petros, petros, rock, and oleum meaning oil. So in other words, when we say Petroleum, we are talking about rock oil, rock oil. So that gives you an idea from where oil comes from. Oil comes from rocks, okay? That's why we say oil and gas rocks. Oil comes from rocks. So yeah, you, you may be quite right when you say the ground, not really the ground, and we will see where that goes. Okay, so, so I've told you a couple of things here that we tend to refer to oil and gas as petroleum, and we have said petroleum means rock oil, okay? Now, petroleum also includes both your oil and your gas. And the, the other name we tend to call petroleum is hydrocarbon, hydrocarbon. And that's because it's got hydrogen and it's got carbon. It's got hydrogen and it's got carbon. Now, if you see at the bottom of where I've got HC, 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 you can see that's just showing you what chemistry, what a hydrocarbon compound would look like. Okay? Now, I'll show you something short. It's in the kitchen. That's not good. It's okay. I'll show you something, something you can do in your house. I'll show you in your house at your own spare time. But just remember that hydrocarbons is made up of hydrogen and carbon. Now, the other thing I want you to realize, if you look at your top right corner of your screen, you've got different um, compositions of hydrocarbons. Now, this is liquid hydrocarbon. We also have gas, and I'll talk about gas shortly. Now, if you look at that, our hydrocarbons, our oil or our crude oil, our petroleum is not all the same. So at this point, I'm not talking about the petrol that you buy um, in, in, the, in, the, in the petrol station or the diesel or the kerosene or the paraffins or the fuel. At this moment, I'm looking at the crude oil, the, 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 the crude oil that we get from the ground, the raw crude oil. It comes in different compositions. So you can see different, different, different shades of it. So these are actually real samples of crude 
from different locations. So you can see it can be dark brown, it can be a bit lighter here, and just different bars. So no two places really have the same type of crude. And that's why we talk about crude types, whether it's light, whether it's heavy, whether it's sweet, whether it's um, sour. And for those of you who may have heard, you may hear things like Brent crude. Um, if you're in West Africa, you may hear things like the Bonnie light. Um, if you're in the Middle East, you hear things like the Arabian crude. All those are various compositions of crude. They're, they are not exactly the same. They are not all the same, but they are all crude. They are all petroleum. They are all hydrocarbon. But if, in terms of composition, they vary. And we'll talk about composition, okay? So when you hear things like Bonnie light, the Brent crude, the Arabian crude, they are all crude. They are all petroleum. They are all hydrocarbons, but they are just they've named them based on their composition. Okay, now, in chemistry, at the right bottom, you see where we try to show what our hydrocarbon um, compounds will look like in terms of bonds. And I've done something interesting here. Okay. Can all of you see this? Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Yeah. What, what, what do I have there? A fruit cross. Okay, what was the fruit? Strawberry and four grapes. <laughs> <laughs> Strawberry and four grapes, well done. Now, what do you think, does anybody have an idea what I'm trying to depict here? Methane. Great, great, who, who said that? It me. was me. Okay. Okay. Do you does anybody natural gas? Well done, well done. Good. So I use this as simply spaghetti and my my green a strawberry to indicate what a meeting what you would have, you know, when you see you see meeting. So this is what meeting is. Is one, one element. Hydrogens and carbon. I think you're on mute. Sorry, muted. Can you all see me? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I've got marshmallows, please. And do this with marshmallows at, as well. Marshmallows and spaghetti. So parents, if you can get your children some spaghetti and marshmallows so they can build some hydrocarbon models, that will be good. Okay. So if you if you if you give them marshmallows and spaghetti, they can build some hydrocarbon models. Okay. So that's this is the simplest form of a petroleum or hydrocarbon um, compound that we have, CH4, okay? And that is methane, as has been said, and that is what we refer to as natural gas. Is that okay? All right, so you can do that at your spare time. Just use spaghetti, build up several things. You can have other compounds such as C2H4. Okay, somebody is writing on the screen. Well done, I mean, you could do C, 2, H, H, 8, and so on and so forth. But this is just to give you an idea of how you can play around with things like marshmallows or strawberries or other sweeties to make up, to make up some of these models. Okay, so I move on now. Okay, so I'm now on to what are the five things, what are the five ingredients that we need to be able to get our oil and gas. What are the five things that are important for the formation of oil and gas? So the number one thing, which we've now referred to here as the number one step to heaven, is what we call source. Or you may want to, you know, when I ask the question, where does oil and gas come from? Some of you said from the ground. So it's source, what we call source rock. So how does oil and gas form? So if you're looking at the screen, 
what you have here is that millions of years ago, billions of years ago, that's what science, that's what science tells us, that you had some living organisms, some of them tiny organisms, and some of them plants, some of them animals, but tiny organisms, which would and they were in the, in the ocean. Somebody mentioned ocean, okay, in the sea. Mm -hmm. And what happened was that these living organisms died and began to decay, okay? And as they decayed, what you then have happened was that you had series of particles or silts coming over these decayed organisms, okay? So you had them, you had this, these, these, as you can see, I hope you can see my arrow, these are the organisms. And as they began to decay and, and fall on the ground, you then had sand, silt coming over them. And over these years, the, the sand and the silt continued to build up and build up and build up and build up and become what today we know as rocks, okay? Now, but then remember, underneath the sand, you had these trapped, decayed organisms, okay? You had these trapped, decayed organisms. And what then happens is, if you see at the bottom of the screen, I have said in the absence of O2, does any, I purposely put it there, does anybody know what O2 is? And it's not the O2 arena in London. Anybody know what, and it's not your O2 phone? Does anybody know what O2 is? Oxygen. Well done, oxygen. So in the absence of oxygen, as these, as these dead organisms were buried and had decayed, in the absence of organism, in the absence of oxygen and under heat, because whilst they were under the ground, whilst they were covered with sand, they were, there was heat there and there was pressure there, pressure on those organisms, those, org those organic organisms or those living organisms began to change to what we call kerogene. And it is kerogene which then resulted in oil and gas. Okay? So I'll take it again that billions and millions of years ago, yeah. had living organisms such as plants and little animals who would decay and were buried. Yeah. And that get, they kept getting buried to you know, bury thousands and thousands of deaths. And as that happened, in the absence of oxygen, I mean, if you were to bury somebody on the ground, if you were to cover yourself on the ground, you find out that there'll be no oxygen. And, and as they kept getting buried in the absence of oxygen, there was a lot of pressure and there was heat down there. Those organic materials began to change to what we call kerogene. And it is kerogene that forms our oil and gas. So we've got examples of some of the things we are talking about there, algae, tiny sea plants, marine animals. These are the sort of things that form oil and gas. Now, as you would have seen, as you, from what I've just said, you will notice that oil and gas formation has nothing to do with us. It has nothing to do with human beings. We didn't do anything to form oil and gas. It's just a natural occurrence, okay? It's not anything to do with what science did. Scientists didn't inject anything to make oil and gas. No, it's, it's a natural occurring, occurring um, product. And what I would say, Mother Nature has blessed the world with, okay? So for us to have oil and gas, there has to be a source rock. One, number one, there has to be a source rock. And that's what technologists do. When they try, when 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 they are doing their um, geological surveys, what they are trying to identify is whether a rock is a source rock, whether that rock has the potential to hold oil and gas. So they they try to identify a source rock. So number one step, number one ingredient that we need is source rock for the production of oil and gas. Okay, number two. So you see here, to bottom, I made again, you can see what we are saying. We had plants over the years, got, you can see deep up to generate oil and gas. As they got buried, you had different layers of sand and silt covering them. 
it is that those layers of sand and seal that build up to what we now call rocks, okay? Those are the, what we now call rocks. And in this case, you may want to call it sedimentary rocks. So those are the, the, the layers that now build up to form rocks. And like I say, you can see on the right-hand side where my mouse is, you can see where you have dead plantains sink, sinking down. And those are these microorganisms that produce oil and gas. Okay, number two step to heaven. Now, we have said that we need a source rock. So we say that we have those organisms, they get buried, trapped under, under several layers of sand and silt, and in the absence of oxygen and with pressure and heat, they form a substance called kerogene. Kerogene then forms oil and gas. But then the oil and gas that is formed needs to migrate. So the number two thing that you must have for the accumulation of commercial oil and gas, once the oil is formed at the source, it needs to migrate, it needs to move. It needs to move. So we say migration power path allows for oil and gas to flow from your source rock into what the next ingredient we'll talk about, which is reservoir. So you can see here where my mouse is. You see your source rock. So we've said this is where our oil and gas forms based on what we talked about. And then that oil, then big oil and gas begins to seep through several layers of sand until it goes to what we will discuss about later as our third ingredient, which is reservoir. So that the source rock is not the reservoir, okay? The source rock is not the reservoir. The source rock is where it is formed. It then goes, has to go through a migration path to get accumulated in another area, which we refer to as the reservoir, which is why you hear reservoir engineering which is where we talk about reservoir fluids, and we'll talk about that shortly. So you need a source, and then you need, there has to be a migration. If there is no migration, there will be no accumulation in your reservoir rocks. So the source forms it, but then we need to move it from the source to another set of rocks that we refer to as our reservoir rocks. Is that okay? Forget about all the other things. I'll talk about them when, when I get on as I progress with the slide. So the number one step we've said is that there must be a source or a source rock. And we've said that the source is, we know what the source is. It's, it's where you have um, microorganisms or living organic materials which over the years, millions of years have, have accumulated or have, have decayed and have then formed oil and gas. From that source, then it goes what you, so your red lines here represent your migration path to the part of accumulation. Okay. Number three. Number three. Once your once your once your 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 you get your oil and gas from your source rock, and we said it has to migrate. It has to then be trapped. You know when you say somebody something is trapped, it means you have no place to go to anymore. You know when you play. Um, games with your siblings and you tend to trap each other or if you come from certain parts of the world where you set traps for some um, um, animals or birds. Um, so it's to hold them, you know, to stop further um, movement as it were, to prevent migration. So we need the third ingredient that we need or the third thing that we need is a trap. So not only do you need a sauce, you need migration because maybe I should ask a quick question. If there is no trap, what's going to happen? If we don't have a trap, what's going to happen to our oil and gas that comes from our source and keeps oh, migrating? What? No <laughs> it will keep on migrating. It will keep on migrating. It will just keep on migrating. It will just keep on moving. There has to be a way to stop it, you know? And I remember, if I remember correctly, when Emmanuel taught those of us who were in the physics class, we talked about the laws of motion. He say an object will continue in this state of motion, except there is a force, except you have a force that stops it. Okay, so that's similar with our migration. It will keep migrating. The oil and gas will just keep going round and round and round and round, and we can't get it. There won't be the oil and gas industry as we know it if there was no trap, okay? So we need a trap. 
And all that, remember, all this we are talking about is still happening between what some of you have referred to as the ground, but really is happening between within the rocks. So our rocks is not just the mountains that we see with our physical eyes. Underneath the seabed, there are rocks. Okay, there are rocks. So underneath the ground, so some of you will say the ground, yes, you, you, you are right. I mean, there are rocks. Okay, so the trap is where our oil and gas will collect so that it can prevent any further migration. Now, there are different types of traps, and I'm not going to be delving into a lot of geology here, but I've shown you four different types of traps that we have. The first is what we call an anticline, and you can see um, the, 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 the shape of it there, okay? So anticline trap. Um, and what is happening is if you have your oil, water, gas, which I will show you later on, you would have a, you would have a collector, and an impermeable um, rock that would help to trap, trap oil, that stops the further movement of the oil. Now, the, the other side, we have got the fault trap. Now, in, in geology, or um, we talk about what we call plate tectonics, and we say there's a movement of the earth. So what you're seeing there is that sometimes the movement of the earth, you know, sometimes the ground can actually move. Some of us may not notice this, but in, in certain parts of the world that are pro prone to um, um, earth movements, you, sometimes you actually feel houses moving. So sometimes we've got this earth movement that forms what we call a fault. And that fault helps to trap, you can see, helps to trap. Because there's a fault, it has, the fault has for that oil and there's also what is called a salt dome again that those are um um inorganic mineral salts that accumulate and i i wouldn't delve into that and the last of it is what we call stratigraphic um, traps and again that is due to how the layers of sand the layers of law um of 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 um of rocks or layers of sand accumulate on the on top of our dead decayed um organisms now the other way to look at it i thought i was going to put that picture i don't think i put it here but if you ever go to where they are digging up the ground um, near you if you take a cross section of the f you would find out you will notice that there are different layers the layers are not all the same they have different what we call stratigraphy another way to look at it is if you ever go close to any rocks, I mean, um, maybe those who are in Scotland and there are lots of um, mountains around us. I mean, if you ever walk towards um, some of it, you will see some of these faults and some of these stratigraphic traps that I'm talking about. But just, this just gives you an idea of what forms a trap. But the important thing I want you to know at this is in the oil and gas, So the fourth thing is, once the oil and gas is trapped, it then stores in where it gets trapped in what we call a reservoir. And a reservoir is just a container, OK? So you can have a tank that you refer to as a reservoir. So a reservoir is just a tank, a holder, OK? So you have, you have what is called a reservoir. And what you can see here, you can see some of the some of the, the the diagrams here that is showing you. So this is typically the way oil and gas correct. So you have a source rock, okay, and it migrates until it gets to where we what we'll refer to our reservoir rock, okay, and in our reservoir rock that is where it gets trapped, and in that trap you would find. Why do you think we have gas at the top and oil at the bottom? Anybody? Density. 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 Gas is like oil. Gas is lighter than oil. Gas is lighter than oil. So because, because gas is lighter than oil. So, and I will 
something else that I haven't said whilst I was talking about um, petroleum and I was talking about the formation of oil and gas. What do you think? Looking at this picture, it's not indicated though, but what else do you think should be there? What else do you think is missing there? Anybody? Water. Water! Well done. Who said that? Ed, Tega. Tega, well done, Tega. Water. So our reservoir, in our reservoir, we just don't only have oil and gas, we also have water. We also have water. And that's part of the reason why we, we, there are lots of what we call oil and gas processing. Part of why we need, I suppose, as, aside from water, there is another element I'll come to, but that's part of the reason why we need to process our, our crude oil so that we can separate out the oil, the gas, and the water. So we've got water. Well done. Now, another question. Where do you think the water will be? At the bottom. Bottom of what? The oil. Bottom of the oil. Okay. Why is it at the bottom of the oil? Density. Density. Ah, somebody is whispering to somebody. I hear that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Density again. So the other thing to note is Gas the density, lighter the object, and heavier the density, and the greater the density, heavier the object. Well done, well done, well done, Femi, right? Yeah, so, yeah, so you've got gas at the top, you've got oil, and then you've got water. So water is at the bottom of this. So gas is lighter than oil, and oil is lighter than water. And you can try this at home if you... If you, I don't know which of the oils you may have, um, maybe not quite, but maybe if you try some of granot oil or olive oil, I don't know how heavy they are compared to the water you may have. But if you try it and you, and you put it in a, in a transparent glass and you put them together, oil and water don't mix. Um, so you would notice that the oil should be at the top and the water at the bottom. Okay. Very well done. Now, one more question. What else do you think would be contained, you know, when we take what we call crude oil? Agreed, it will have, it will have oil, it will have water. Times will, all the time will also be in our petroleum. What else? Organic composition. Okay, apart from and, and what? Organic composition. Sand. Sand, organic competition. I had sand. And well done. Who said that? So okay. Sand. Also yeah. understand where why is potatoes from, from the ground. Find sand in it because in our oil, our 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 oil and gas. It will come out with sand, it will come out with water. So very well done. So the fourth ingredient that we need is reservoir. The reservoir is where our oil, our gas collects. Okay? It is the condition. What is the first ingredient we need? Yeah, go on, Ella. Source. Source rock. Source rock, okay. Number two. Uh, migration. Migration path. Number three. Truck. Truck. And number four. Reservoir. Reservoir. Okay, we're getting there. Let's get number, number five. <laughs> what number five will be even looking at this diagram looking at what you've got on the screen can anybody guess heaven heaven <laughs> rock. fractional distillation well done okay we need a C. This <laughs> can you Mango, that's that. Okay, so that is my reservoir. I need a seal. 
What's going on? My oil and gas will continue to seep out, okay? So I need a seal. Oh, sorry. I've double typed prevents there. I didn't see that. So. Gas from escaping from the reservoir, okay? So the seal prevents your oil and gas from escaping from the reservoir. So remember, migration from source, it gets and then we have a seal the seal is what stops it from escaping from your reservoir does that make sense yeah so yeah. The seal is what stops your oil and gas that is produced from escaping from the reservoir if we had no seal then your oil and gas will escape from the reservoir and then we wouldn't have any reservoir engineers. We wouldn't have any drilling people. Is, is, Ella, were you raising your hands for something? I guess we'll take questions later, but I'm about, I'll soon be rounding up. So we need the seal. So the seal is the reason why we then have to drill. So made up of what we call impact rock not penetrate. Okay, oil and gas. So we pull rocks from as a so drilling. When you hear that, maybe oil and gas people who are drillers or work in the oil and gas industry, when you hear people talking about drilling, what they are trying to do is to drill through several formations and then they go drill through a seal to get into the reservoir. So it's when they get into the reservoir, they then stop and then we're able to produce our oil and gas. So let's refresh our minds again. What is the number one ingredient we need for oil and gas? Source rock. Source rock. Yes. The source rock. Number three. Trap. Trap. Number four is the reserve. Number four is the reserve. These are the five ingredients that we need for commercial activity. Reserve, migration, trap, five steps and seal things that must have oil and gas. Okay, let me very go very quickly. I was going to show you a video. Here. Sorry, can you all see the video? No, sir. You can't see the video. Yes, sir. So just bear with me one second. So. Whilst we're waiting, can everyone unmute or uh, unmute their mics, please? Can you please mute your mic? You can hear you stop snoring. Okay, so can you see my video now? Yes, sir. What drives our cars, buses, and planes? Powers our electricity and allows us to cook our food and heat our water. Most of today's energy needs are met by fossil fuels like coal, oil, and gas. These unique, high-energy fuels are non-renewable resources that took millions of years to form. About two billion years ago, marine organisms like algae and microscopic animals and plants died and settled on the ocean floor. Beneath other sediments in the ocean and in the absence of oxygen, these fossils changed into a substance called kerogen. Under heat and pressure, kerogen gradually changes into oil or gas. 
the whole process usually takes at least a million years. At the molecular level, oil and gas are hydrocarbons made up of hydrogen and carbon atoms. The constant pressure and movement of the Earth's crust squeezes oil and gas through the pores or spaces within rocks. Some oil and gas reaches the Earth's surface and seeps out naturally into land or water. Often it is trapped beneath the surface by impermeable layers or rock structures, like faults and folds. Okay, so that's what I wanted to show you in there. I go back to my slides now. Um, Okay, so that's a summary of what I've done. No, now very quickly, what are the types of, remember, it's oil and gas, we still refer to them as reservoir fluids. So remember, we said that in our reservoir, we've got gas, oil, water, and sand. Okay, now, what are the types of reservoir fluids we've got, or petroleum fluids, or if you like, or hydrocarbon fluids that we've got. We've got our black oil, which is what I showed you earlier, um, showing you the different um, compositions. They, can, they are sometimes black, they are some dark green, they are some brown, okay? That's what we call black oil. That's what we tend to refer to as crude oil, okay? I showed you this, my making of methane, okay? That's natural gas, CH4. That's what we know as natural gas. That's what hits, hits our homes. That's what we use to, to cook, okay? Natural gas. Now, sometimes we have this gas. One of the problems we have with gas is gas is very difficult to handle because of its nature. So if we wanted to transport gas to far away countries, say, they, say where you are, say your nation in Nigeria produces gas, and you wanted to transport this to to US or to India or to China, you can't transport it by pipelines. You can't just put it inside a container to transport it. What you will need to do is to liquefy it. That's where we get the word liquefied natural gas. So what we do is that we turn our gas into liquid. And how do we turn our gas into liquid? We cool it to minus 100, over minus 100 or under minus 160 degrees Celsius. That is really cold, way beyond freezing point of water, okay? And once you, if you cool methane gas to that temperature, it will become liquid. And that's where you hear of LNG vessels, natural liquefied or LNG liquefied natural gas vessels, okay? We also have what we call gas condensates, or sometimes we call them natural gas liquids. Now, what happens is when you're, from, when you're producing gas, sometimes some of your gas, even though remember we said our gas should be methane, but in, in, in reality, it is not always pure methane. You would have some heavier, what we call some heavier hydrogen and carbon atoms that will also go into your gaseous phase such as, well, sometimes we do include things like ethane, butane, propane. For those of you who are into chemistry, you will know that. Now, those heavier hydrocarbons, as we are producing gas, sometimes they begin to condense out. Condense is like when you're boiling, when your, your, your mom or your dad is cooking or you're boiling water in your pot. You notice that as you begin to boil, it vaporizes, the water vaporizes and turns into gas. But then by the time it gets to the top of the cover of your pot, it begins, it collects, and then it begins to condense as liquid and drop back into the pot. So that's what happens to our gas. Our gas begins to condense. When they condense to form liquid, we refer to that as natural gas liquids or gas condensates. And like I said before, that in, in our reservoir fluids, we also have water. Now in the oil and gas industry, we tend to refer to the water element as B, S, and W. So if you ever hear somebody say to you B, S, and W, it simply means basic sediment and water. So we tend to, to, to put our water and our sand together and we refer to them as basic sediment and water. So our reservoir fluid types again are black oil, natural gas, liquefied natural gas, condensate, 
and water or basic sediment and water. Okay, very quickly, so that we can ask questions. I talked about when I told you about it, um, when I started, I mentioned that in the introduction that and start food. We talked about and start. Um, oh, okay, so my time is up. So I'll just round up now. So sweet and sour crude, that is what it is. If you have sulfur content in your crude, that is sweet. If it's, um, that is sour. If there is no sulfur content in your crude, it is, it is, it is sweet. So it, we refer to sweet crude as one without sulfur and sour crude as one with high content of sulfur. When it is heavy, it means it has a higher molecular weight. When it is light, it means it has a lower molecular weight. Okay, this is my conclusion. This is about it. What have we taken today? I want you to leave here knowing that oil and gas is a free gift from what I call Mother Nature. We've not, science has not done anything to produce oil and gas. I mean, in terms of the formation of oil and gas. Oil and gas is not renewable, okay? It is not renewable. So once it's depleted, that's it. it, it it's until we get to another location where we find accumulation. At the moment, the, the, the production of oil and gas, I mean, the oil and gas is giving us the most of the energy we need in, a, in our world. Now, we need to begin to look out for more renewable sources, okay? We need to begin to look out for more renewable sources. So our renewable sources, we've got their wind, our solar, our tidal, our wave, our high... What's the difference between tidal and wave? I know that I'm speaking to majority of nine to 16 year olds. Um, you are the next generation that is going to take us to what I call promised land or perhaps. Excuse me. QL. And maybe you will come up, maybe in years to come, you will come up with your own five steps to the new heaven, which would be renewable and clean energy. Thank you very much. Sorry, I overshot by a couple of minutes. Sorry for that. Thank you very much. Any questions? Excuse me, what's the difference between tidal and wave? Hello. Hi, Pierre. Thank you very much. Um, we'll have Rena take the questions. She'll be taking four questions. Um, we'll hand over to you, Rena. If you have any extra questions, please put it in the chat. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Ibiye Iyala, for that wonderful presentation. It was very informative. We have a question here from Shima Obi Ebeniro, and the question is, what is the source, or sorry, what is the seal made out of? Oh, okay. I, like I said, um, and like you would have seen in the... Um, sorry, I'll just go try and move. Move. Sorry if I just show my slides again just to answer that question, if it's okay. Um, so when I did, I showed you the seal. I told you it's made of, of impermeable rock. Um, and this is not geology. I didn't want to go into all the different types of rock formations that we, we, we have. Um, I'd, so I'll just leave it as a rock, but a rock that is not permeable. So the rock that will not allow your oil and gas to seep out through. So it's, it's a rock layer. Remember, all this we are looking at is underneath the earth. And we, these are all different layers of rocks underneath the earth. So it's a, it's a rock layer, but it's a rock layer that does not allow oil and gas to um, permeate through it. I don't know if that answers your question, Ebeniro. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. So we've got another question here from KMJ. And the question says, what's the difference between tidal and wave? Oh, tidal energy and wave. That's, 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 that's a whole, <laughs> that's a whole new, new, um, New area. How how simplistic can I can I? I someone answer the question. I think Oli answered the question on the chat. Yeah. As well. When oil migrates, where does it move to? 
I'm asking a question. So someone is asking a question here. A lot when of us on the background that... Okay, can you go on? Yes. So someone else is asking a question. When oil migrates, where does it move to? When oil migrates, where does it go to? Okay, there's an echo, but let me just um, clarify a bit about Tidal. Like somebody has put in a very technical term there. So the movement of the Earth and the moon, we, we have what we call gravitational force, and we, I know we understand that. And that affects um, the different, I say it's a bit more technical, but like it's been posted there, where you, your tidal energy is based on uh, the sun, but using the waves of the river, the waves of the water to generate forces um, that will um, turn turbines that, um, that would then generate electricity. So that's a basic on that's my, if it if it migrates, like we said, if it's formed from the source, we are hoping that as it migrates, it gets trapped in a location that will eventually become the reservoir. But if this does not happen, and in some parts of the world, you you actually have oil seeps. So because there is no there is no there is no trap, there is no sealing mechanism, the oil can actually trap and come up to surface, just like you saw in, in the video that I put. It can actually seep and just come up to surface. So yes, where there is, if there is nothing to trap it or seal that, that, that rock, then the oil will just keep migrating and you would just see oil leaks on, on the ground, so to speak. Does that answer your question? Yes, sir. Okay, that's fine. Thank you very much, Irena, for um, anchoring the Q&A session. Thank you so very much, so, so very much, Dr. Obie. We really, really enjoyed the session. And I hope you all did too. If you enjoyed it, just wave. Just wave. Thanks for joining in. Um, just to go over the next couple of um, events that we're going to be having, on the 13th of June, Saturday as well, we are going to be having um, careers in STEM. Um, so it's a session that is going to be talking about STEM. The full meaning of um, STEM is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So we'll be talking about all the types of vocations in these sectors. We'll be talking about the benefits. We'll be talking about the subjects that you require to do. We'll also be talking about the salaries. I'm sure all of you love money, don't you? So we'll be talking about the salaries as well um, that you'll be earning if you decide to take one of these subjects as well. Then um, two weeks after that, on the 27th of June, we'll be talking about achieving your dreams. I'm sure everyone here has a dream, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Does everybody have a dream? Yes. Yeah. Talking about, you know, awakening the giants within you, motivation and, you know, developing yourself as well as, you know, what you do to achieve your dreams, setting that goal and also the things you need to do, the things you need, how you need to plan towards achieving your dreams. So set the date in your diary, Saturday 13th of June and 27th of June. We'll be having those. We'll also be having upcoming events <laughs> in July, which we'll be communicating during the June So if you set your date, set the date in your calendar, we can communicate that with you. I hope everyone has had a good time. Yes. 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 I hope you had a good time. We had a good time. I really enjoyed it. EBA. We had a good time. I learned. Yes. Oh, I knew some things. I didn't know some things. So thank you for um, this talk and this lecture. About mm -hmm. my